What's up guys, Charles here with D2APDesigns.com. I'm bringing you another tutorial. Um, today's going to be an After Effects tutorial where I'm going to be discussing using uh, lens flares in uh, motion graphics. I got a tutorial request for this. Uh, someone asked me to do a tutorial because they said they have a hard time um, getting lens flares to look good in their uh, motion graphics. So I told them I would do a tutorial and help them out. So uh, the first example here would be the recent intro I did and um, you can see there's a flare there a flare there and then there's a flare there um, and then the second example would be uh, chaos which I did a while back um, it's got some flares in here as you can obviously tell um, so there's a couple things I do first of all I look at the footage and figure out the type of flare that would probably best fit this and what color um, so you know come in here open up your optical flares and then you can custom build one or you can look through the presets that uh, it comes with they have some very nice presets um, for this one I felt like um, I was better off just having some long kind of like somewhat scattered looking flares that um, aren't overly bright so you know that's the type of flare I picked I picked a flare that has these long um, I can't remember the name here um, irises these multi irises and stuff I wanted something that would stretch a lot across the screen and um, it that wouldn't be too overpowering and then once I found the one I liked um, what what I did was uh, the position of it you can see let's see here there you can see I um, centered it way over here um, you know I, I didn't want this real bright part to be anywhere on here because I felt like it'd be too distracting too bright so I had it drug out over here in this area and then I just animated it and as it animated it got further and further away and it also went downwards and as you can see it it kind of fades the further it goes so it's brighter and then just kind of fades out slowly and then it switches to a new screen and then I I did pretty much the same for this flare here um, just keyframed it and uh, I don't know if I put a fade on this one or not. I think it fades a little bit. So um, the other thing I did to help blend it in is um, I've actually got a tutorial on this that I've done before. But under um, the uh, blending modes, if you don't have the blending modes up, hit F4 and it'll you know toggle between. Anyway, so pop up the blending modes. And what I like to do is I like to put them on add usually. A lot of people put them on normal and it's fine um, in this particular case it doesn't make too much of a difference but personally I think adds a little better um, I think it looks more natural it helps illuminate everything more whereas normal it just kind of puts it on there and doesn't really do much but as you can see when we do add it just kind of illuminates everything as if um, there were act as if a flare was actually or a, a light source was actually there causing some sort of optical flare on the lens and also illuminating the objects so that's one thing you can do to make it look a little more realistic and then also um, look at the speed of your animation and try and um, get the speed of your optical flare animation to kind of go along with the speed of your camera movement because if you do a really fast jerky flare and then your camera movements really slow and smooth it's not going to look right. So, I mean, for this, you can see, I probably could even slow down the flare a little bit more than what I did, but it looks all right. If I had, you know, let's let's go ahead and adjust the flare here. Let's say I made the flare look like this. You know, watch how fast this one goes once it renders or builds a RAM preview. See how fast that is? It's too fast. I mean, it still looks all right, but that's, you know, for this type of animation, it's not the animation we want, or it's not the uh, speed that we want, because it goes that fast, and then it's pretty well gone, and the animation's still continuing on. So, 
if anything, you, you probably want it to move a little bit slower than your animation and last throughout the whole duration. And then, you know, switch frames and, you know, this will happen. And then also, if you notice um, the camera movement, it kind of pans around and goes to the right. So the flare pans in a downward direction and off to the right. And then for this one, the flare pans off to the left and it goes upwards just as the camera goes upwards. Um, I mean, obviously you don't have to animate it like that, but I think um, matching the movement of the flare or close or coming close to matching the movement with the of the uh, camera and flare, I think it tends to look a little better. But um, that's kind of opinion, really. Um, a lot of graphics and motion graphics is really just opinion because what one person thinks looks good, another one will not like. So, you know, personally, I like to somewhat match the flare with the camera's movement. Um, I think that's what looks good. And then for this one, for Chaos, um, it's much more fast-paced, much more hectic. So really you don't have to worry about blending the flares quite so much. You can have the flares, you know, come in and out real quickly. Like this one you can see here. This one only stays around for, you know, a couple milliseconds. It doesn't even last a second. Not even close to a second, really. It just comes in there real quick, illuminates everything, fades out, then these flares come in, and then it switches to another scene here. Um, and for something like this, that's perfectly fine because it's chaotic, a lot of stuff's going on. You know, no one's going to go, oh, that flare didn't look right, you know, because, you know, none of this really looks right, to be honest. I mean, it's just all crazy and stuff's flashing all over the place. And um, that's why I named it Chaotic or chaos rather because you know I mean well, it just there's a ton of stuff going on and uh, it's twitching and flashing and getting all blurry and um, so yeah for something like this you really don't need to worry about it so much now if you notice right here um, well, let me go ahead and just uh, doing some more RAM preview here um, now if you notice here um, when that tentacle swept over the lens flare, I, I keyframed it so that the lens flare shut off as if the lens flare was actually behind it. And then when it popped back, or uh, when it rolled back over to where the uh, flare would be exposed, I turned it back on. And then um, I also I also adjusted the um, settings so that these would flicker. Uh, let's see if I don't even know where all the flares are. I have a ton of layers. I really should organize this better than I did. Okay, so there's a flare there. Um, the flicker, you can see I have the speed and amount all the way at 100. And again, for something like that, the flicker speed is just fine. You want it to be really flat, uh, fast and bright and just all over the place because, you know, this again is supposed to be chaotic and just crazy. And then for something like this, um, I had the flicker really low. On some of them, I don't even think I put the flicker on. Like, uh, let's see here. Okay, no. For this one, I had the speed at 100 and the amount at 67. Um, I think that's for the flare all the way at the... Is it at the end? No. Let's see. Okay, yeah. This is the flare in the beginning, if I remember right. And, you know, you can see, you know, it does flicker pretty fast, but it's not too noticeable. And then, you know, this one, let's see what the flicker's on. Yeah. So, again, this one, same, pretty much the same settings. And um, you don't want to overdo it because, again, this is a more slow, smooth animation. And just a ridiculous amount of flicker would be too distracting. Um, too little flicker, somewhat pointless, probably won't even notice it. And then for this one here, I think I had the... Uh, flicker up a bit more, maybe not, I don't know. Yeah, for this one, I made the flicker uh, slower. So, you know, you got to play with it a bit, experiment, see what you think looks good, but, you know, hopefully you can use some of the tips I gave you to uh, better incorporate your flares into your projects. So, uh, I'm out of here, guys. Peace.